Hi guys, sorry I've been in my hands because I had to take time out to do my ABIM exam, the Internal Medicine uh, Certification exam. By the way, if you hear some noise in the background, it's my baby sitting right in front of me. I'm babysitting at the same time as I'm doing this video. But anyways, I decided to do this video because I just felt there were things that I wanted to share about my experience. Yeah, there were things I wanted to share about my experience and things that I thought I had known uh, while in residency or maybe I probably wasn't asking the right questions but yeah there, there's several things you need to keep in mind going into this exam. Well some important things to consider when you're going in uh, uh, whether you're first second year or third year in residency th important things to consider. First when do you register for this exam and this I think applies mostly to the third years there is a deadline and ABIM is strict as hell with their deadlines if you miss that deadline you won't be able to register for that year's um, uh, exam and the exams are only written in specific time of the year so the exam is written only I think in August uh, for most of the dates I think that were initially available this year were within August um, in this particular uh, scenario with COVID and everything that's going on they had to make extra dates in December I don't think that will always happen I obviously it probably won't happen next year so if you miss the deadline it means you can't write the exam in the time you're supposed to write it you have to wait another year and it just it's not it's not something you want to do it's, it's the, the load of that is not something you, you, you know just want to carry on so make sure the deadline is usually around April make sure you register in the deadline within you know before the deadline so you can get your dates at least set up for usually in August um, being in third year you should definitely think about the fact that it, you have a very limited time to register for the exam, I mean to write the exam obviously in the month that I mentioned, but at the same time you have to consider whether you're going to be in fellowship or you're going to start your job as an attendant. If you're going to be in fellowship, because most fellowships will start activities, you know, in the first month uh, of the residency cycle, which is July, it means you're battling doing your uh, uh, managing responsibilities as a fellow and studying for the exam at the same time, which can be challenging. So it means you, your study plan should have catered for that and you should, probably should have started studying much earlier than that. Your dedicated study should be done, you know, before you get into the mix of fellowship and everything that's going on in the first year and well, while you're still adjusting. The second thing you have to consider also is if you're going to start a job as a hospitalist or in primary care, do you take time out to study for the exam or you just go right ahead and do, you know, uh, uh, start your job? That's something you have to definitely consider as well. In my case, I, I started, you know, working in July. Um, should I have taken time out? Maybe I should, but because I knew this was going to happen, I had to, you know, ramp up my study in the, in the month uh, before I started, just somewhere between June and and, uh, uh, and July for, for the residence program. The, my residence program allowed us a little bit of time in June, which was very, very important. I think if your residence is not allowing that, you have to put that into your study, study plan uh, as necessary. What do you study? What do you study for the exam? First, I, I'd, I'd like to say that, you know, I feel like there's a disconnect usually between, you know, what the board requires you to know and what you get to learn in the practice of going through residency. There's a huge disconnect there. Um, that is partly, obviously, we have to take responsibility for. In, in my case, I have to take responsibility because you feel like you go through residency and you figure out you know, the ropes, how things are done, the logistics and everything. But if you have to start studying for the boards, it's, it's something different. And you're like, oh my God, I, I, you know, did I just waste a lot of time, you know, learning something different or learning something wrong or whatever the case may be. So I think, you know, we coming into, and most of you coming into the position of being attendants and being people that have to teach other people, you have to carry, have that in mind. You know, your, your teaching and the things that you communicate with other, other people, whether it's your junior colleagues or whatnot, should be things that are evidence-based, things that are, 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 you know, that will go help them to be able to pass the boards, you know, at least. Yes, there's, there's a difference between what you do on the floors and the IC and things like that for, uh, with what you actually face on the boards, but you have to figure out a way to merge that as much as possible. And I think residency programs, you know, should do a lot to try and merge that. Let's focus on the specific materials to study for the exam. You obviously will be, it will be between MK SAP, you know, 
U World, and some people mentioned Med Study as well. I haven't used Med Study. I don't know what it looks like or what what the content, uh, whether it be able to uh, help me uh, prepare for the exam. But obviously, I went through MKSAP for the most part. You know, from first year, second year, third year, and MKSAP questions where everybody knows they're difficult, right? But I, I didn't. I didn't. If, if, if it were just about the difficulty, then doing those questions would probably have prepared me for the exam. And I don't think it really, really, really did to the point where I felt confident. I didn't feel like I had a good mastery of the concepts until I did you know the U World practice questions. I think for anybody who's watching this, U World, U World, U World, U World, U World, U World over and over and over and over and over again. I can't emphasize that enough. Definitely doing MKSAP helps, right? But if you do MKSAP without doing your world, going to that exam, you will definitely feel, you know, ah, you feel a certain way like you weren't you know, adequately prepared. But doing MKSAP and capping that with UWorld is so crucial. I wish I'd started UWorld way earlier, and I wish I, I knew very deeply that UWorld represented significant parts of the exam, uh, you know, way, way better than MKSAB, and I think that's just very important for everybody to understand. You know, in, in residency, obviously, everybody's studying, we're doing the in-service exams, and blah, 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 blah. That's an opportunity for you. You know, I, I felt like I didn't, I didn't take that opportunity and that's that's my biggest regret because I you know in service exams you just do whatever and go sit for the exam at least in my case I'm sure other people probably studied deeply uh, hard for it um, if I had done for example all of the you know taking that time to try to do intensely do those questions you know for the in service exams at each opportunity I probably wouldn't have found it hard going into the ABIM but you know thankfully I was able to get exposed to you world which I think was super super important so I, if, if there's one thing you take out of this video start early start in your first year for your for every in-service exam try to think of it as your ABIM exam and study as if that is the case. You know, your first year, second year, and third year, do all those questions. Questions will definitely, you know, improve your, your performance way more than any uh, specific study can do. At the end of the day, I use the board basics, right, to give me structure, and that, that was also crucial. But because I was doing the questions, I knew exactly what to focus on in the board basics. So eventually, I just kept flipping through my board basics, and everything was kind of, you know, arranging. You know, we reference one word I saw in that question, one word I saw in that other question. And I think that's where the book comes in. But just reading the book alone and not doing questions is also something you don't want to do. And I think, you know, if, if you do your MK sub, do your U world, start early, for God's sake. And you know you, you, sh you should be fine, and really that's that's all I, I I have. So hopefully in the subsequent videos we'll be talking about specific concepts and you know very board oriented uh, 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 concepts and teaching. I think that's something I can do at this point. I, I, there's no point just teaching things, you know. Uh, vaguely teach them the way the board would expect you to know them. I think uh, we'll be able to get a lot done with that. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.